daytime with Aston Avery. Stephen Smith joins me. And right now, joining us here on Gateway 97.8 is uh, our incredible Hulk, but and also <laughs> our friend as well, Ambassador to Anna Kennedy Online, and also entrepreneur Ben Pearson joins us right now. So, Ben, hello. Hello. Good morning. But Aston, you like to put labels on people like Incredible Hulk. I'm not sure that might be a form of bullying. <laughs> I know it's only in jest, so it's I know. all good. <laughs> How are you? I'm very well, thank you. I love well. the red top. Tell, tell us about the red top you're wearing. Yeah, so the red top, it's all about spreading awareness for Harvey's Law. Oh, yeah. Um, the uh, the law that needs to be brought in to prosecute people for online trolling. Absolutely, it's it's uh, it's it's terrifying. We're just saying it's a new weapon for cowards, isn't it? So you actually confront people. What they do is they hide and then call you names. Yep, and all the legislation is completely out of date. You know, the Malicious Communications Act. You know, hasn't been revamped in years. Yeah. Online is moving so quickly. We need to do something about this. Absolutely, absolutely. It is really so. You mentioned about Harvey's Law here, uh, Ben. So, can you tell us a bit more to our listeners in detail about Harvey's Law? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so, you might have seen like Harvey, uh, for example, getting mocked online, people, um, you know, painting racism, you know, painting themselves different colors to mock him, uh, using different terminology that he uses. Um, basically um, mocking someone that cannot defend themselves, you know, a vulnerable individual. Yeah. Um, and then you see these famous football players, you know, it's a very widespread and uh, broad topic, this this trolling, and it causes, uh, you know, things as extreme as suicide. Yeah, I know. It's, 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 it's quite terrifying because, uh, I mean, back, back in the 70s, people used to get away with it as comedians mocking people exactly. think, think it's funny uh i mean obviously the there's a the, the, you talk about woke and, and comedy etc there's there's this things are funny uh, and then, but mocking someone isn't is it no definitely not and especially someone who can't defend themselves you know i don't think um you know a dispute online is ever a good idea you know things can get uh, misconceived on you know on a keyboard and stuff it's always better to pick up the phone and have a conversation with someone than jump online and everyone else starts jumping on the bandwagon before you know you've got 50,000 comments and somebody at the end of all those 50,000 comments thinking you know I can't take this anymore there's so many people you know and it creates a lot of paranoia a lot of mental illness and it's so easy with texting even to mis misunderstand what someone has said. hundred <laughs> percent. The other day, yeah. someone sent me a message going, uh, I give a reply to something. She went, how rude. Uh, and I went, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to. She, and she came up and said, no, I mean, how rude. I didn't get back to you right away. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's so easily, easily, easily done. But listen, um, you know, people will look at you and you think, oh, the last person to be bullied is going to be you, is it? Um, well, yeah. Um, do you mind telling us a little bit about your story, please? Yeah, of course. So uh, many of you who have listened to um, different uh, shows that I've been on, um, but if you haven't, then I was in care the majority of my life. Um, I've uh, matured an awful lot and, and uh, grown in my mind, um, but before I used to suffer a lot with social communication. I've got autism and um, I was uh, always under the care of social services and then uh, carers would look after me in these homes. Now, what used to go on the go on in the homes was often very violent, a lot of uh, high emotional uh, scenes, and this would get fed back to their loved ones, their family at home, and they would get upset. And then what would happen is they would start trolling me uh, online and saying, "You know, I'm going to come down there with a baseball bat and knock your head off if you touch my mum." Um, you know, all these kind of. Uh, you know, comments, and then it, it would just build up and build up. I'd much prefer that person. I used to often say on, on the comments on Facebook, you know, fine, but don't do it on the keyboard. Don't be a keyboard warrior. Come and say it to my face. Come and see me. I'll tell you exactly how it is. Because that's how I'm used to things. You know, if somebody wants something or has something to say, come here, tell me. I'm a man. I'll stand up to you. You know, that's fine. Or I'll bow down if I'm wrong. You know, I, I'm a very straight talking person, but all this online, I just couldn't cope with it. And it, it really caused me uh, you know, a lot of mental illness and, and trying to take my life. So um, on the mental front here, because this affects men's, people's mental health and their mental well-being here, uh, but Ben, so how has that affected you mentally now that's uh, about what's going on out in the world at the moment? 
Um, in the sense of um, like the general general sort of economic state or um in in hindsight in all aspects really sure okay um well it affects me massively um you know what's going on in the world you know i think that um, these vulnerable people um really need more help and and it should uh, people should get severe consequences um you know it's a bit like if you uh you know if you commit a speeding offense you're guaranteed a consequence you know what you're in for but yeah. these people online are just getting away with it scot-free you know i've seen and witnessed many court cases where people are just laughing as they walk out because the judges can't do anything because the law is so out of date and the judges are bound by the law yeah that's a, that's one of the it is amazing you get a speeding ticket you get a parking ticket um but you don't no you're not liable for, for making someone's life hell sure no, yeah. which, is, which is so wrong and then the thing like harvey's law and other other laws but it needs more and more because uh you know we're just talking about just reading the newspapers the comments underneath that that are allowed it's like throwing apples from the galleries back in the uh the, the <laughs> dark ages uh, uh, or putting people you know it's, it's appalling um i mean one of the things to say is uh what can we teach kids about bullying what, uh, awareness you know, I think we need to be aware of exactly the definition of bullying um, because it can stem from such a small, minute thing to a really obvious, um, you know, uh, bullying, you know, someone coming up and, and really bullying. So I think we need to be aware of the signs, especially in schools. Um, and I think there needs to be a lot more awareness in schools of um, actually um, it was something that really came about um, earlier this week. Um, I went to a friend's funeral and um, the young girl, um, the father, the daughter um, was only 10 and I was in uh, the um, in the cremation and they actually brought her dad in in a coffin and I was asking her about you know what what help have you got and she said oh at school I get counseling um yeah. to try and help me over the trauma and stuff like this and it just dawned on me you know bullying I've seen a lot of bullying in schools in the playground on these sort of group chats and things where all the kids jump on they've all got um devices now and and they're all getting on and mocking each other there should yeah. be more awareness in schools and more about what you do if you witness something you know you're on a I was on the tube with you a few weeks ago if you remember yeah. and it was like if you witness something suspicious going on please report it to the transport police it should be this sort of stuff in schools yeah. if you witness some bullying going on please report it here and you'll get a you know a lollipop as a reward you know there should be more incentive for people to stand up and shout out about this you know, but kids are just so frightened to admit they're being bullied or, you know, they, uh, it's just, it's a stigma almost, you know, you don't want to tell the parents, you don't want to tell, you know, uh, it, it's, it, it, it's so, I mean, what other signs do you think for someone as being bullied? Well, what would you tell me to look out for? Yeah, well, it might sound strange, but um, a bully uh, generally has an underlining fear and I've seen bullies become bullies. You know, people oh, that are yeah. getting getting bullied, getting bullied, then they become a bully themselves to try and hide this underlying fear. Um, so yeah, I think any negative uh, sentiment towards another individual, where they're trying to belittle them, trying to provoke them into something, um, anything like that, um, I think is a sign of bullying. Yeah, absolutely. Now, uh, obviously, we mentioned about uh, bullying here, uh, Ben, as well, and you've taught a good lesson to uh, children that could be listening as well. So uh, but, and I'm going to put a quote out there, there, is that be a buddy, not a bully. So how do you reach out to someone who is being bullied here, Ben? Um, I think um, in a subtle way, I, th I think you don't want to go in all guns blazing. I think just offer your hand and start talking to them about your own experiences rather than dwelling on theirs. And, and you could potentially make it worse and make them become quite introvert. I think that you approach them in a sensitive way and, you know, you, you diplomatically start talking to them about something that happened to you that might have a connection with what's happening to them. And then they might start to regain a different perspective perspective that might help them to overcome what they're going through uh, that's a good thought if you said share your story sometimes uh, it makes people uh, uh, you know uh, open uh, open up and uh, and uh, we were talking about um jake daniels the first openly gay footballer to come out but we know how homophobic uh, the sport of uh, football is uh, and he, he's, uh, this is going to be a step forward 
to have someone out there at 17 being able to stay there. But for a lot of kids, you know, I find when I'm talking about my own experiences has helped when I go to schools and do diversity role models and talk about it. But of course, there's an outcry to stop that by parents saying that we're, we're, there's an agenda. <laughs> we don't <laughs> because most of the kids go to Catholic school and I don't see millions of nuns running around. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I know what you mean. Yeah. <laughs> um, but you know, it, it, it's, so anyway, you you uh, you your own experience. How do you would you tell someone, say you know, they're still suffering from trauma from bullying, how to overcome it, or do you never overcome it? Oh, you could definitely overcome it. You know, it's like me now. So I've had a lot of bullying in the past, and if someone bullies me now it's water of a duck's back you know I'm quite hardened to it you know I've taken a lot of blows I'm not really bothered you know words you know words you know they they do hurt but I can rationalize it um and often just think it's a reflection on them not me but years ago it would be a straight reflection on me and I'd take it personally yeah. So yeah. I think, um, you know, seek professional help. That's what I did. And that's how I've got the perspective uh, on things now. And sometimes you can lose perspective. You always have to revert back to someone with a more neutral uh, professional view. Yeah, you just said to seek, seek professional help there. What, sure. So, so uh, average Joe, I don't know where to go. Where would you suggest going? Um, I would suggest that they went onto Google and found um, some people that were regulated um, and approved, registered um, counsellors, essentially, that yeah. help with trauma or the specific type. So it depends. Because I've got autism, I would always make sure that the counsellor that I go to is an autism. It has experience with uh, people with autism. And then secondly, um, the issue that I'm facing. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and you can whatever going to your GP or or um, that help. Um, I'm not sure the sort of the neutral answer. My personal opinion is it doesn't, but I might be a bit biased here because when I've gone to the GP, they just want to prescribe me with pills. No oh, God, yeah. right? And I've been there, done that, got the T-shirt, and I'm not convinced. You know, you're a bit down, you're getting bullied, right? Here's some Prozac, you know, antidepressants. I'm not. I'm not a big fan of doctors, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but that's not, you know, that's generalizing. That's not to say that that's the answer for everyone, but for me, it's never really worked. Yeah. Not really. As they say, uh, antidepressants, sometimes they work, as you mentioned, sometimes they don't in there. And I've had some antidepressants and apparently, and that didn't work for me. And obviously getting the right sort of drink as an individual. Yeah. It depends on the individual at the end of the day, as you mentioned, but uh, Ben, obviously, you have your own cloning line for the fall of Mal there, but uh, how did that come about that you wanted to uh, have your own clothing line here? Right. Okay. And well, basically I found a bit of a gap in the market. So it was something that I struggled with myself. Um, I was 30 stone uh, going back um, sort of like seven, eight years ago and just couldn't find anything to fit. Um, everything was either too short or too wide, looked like a tent. And I just thought, you know what? I really, all I simply want is what everyone else is wearing on the high street, but in a bigger size. This can't be rocket science. I just need to grade this up correctly. And um, yeah, that, that's, how, uh, that's how it started. Are you going to be doing, because I've been looking online at it, are you going to be doing suits for men? Because they're also pain. The, they're really difficult sometimes, because sometimes you wear a 46 jacket and then you get the trousers to go with the suit, they drop down around your ankles. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I know exactly what you mean. So uh, pre-pandemic, we used to do in the millions of turnover just on suits. Yeah. Um, but the pandemic came, everyone stopped buying formal wear um, because everyone was at home, not going out, not going in um you know to weddings and stuff so it all dried up and we went into casual stuff joggers t-shirts but yeah. now we're over that we've seen another extreme side of it but we've had a bit of a delay getting everything from china you know the lockdowns yeah. um the, the ordering in general is about six months lead time so we have everything coming in august september time to fully kit us out oh brilliant i got a bit, a bit uh, well, i'll look forward to seeing that um thank you ever so much for coming on as usual it's been really helpful uh say no to bullying absolutely yeah it's an absolute pleasure and before you go ben how can our listeners find out more about uh, your clothing brand and also find out more about yourself sure um so if you head over to bigclothingforyou.co.uk um you can find everything we stock on there and if you go to the information pages you'll be able to uh find information about the founder which is me so there you go thank you ever so much so thank no you. worries ben. Ben. Thanks. Cheers. Bye. Bye.
Wee.